for me, it's just doing the right thing all along has been a good thing. You know, we focus on doing the right thing on our farm. How can we make it better? Hello, and welcome to this edition of the State of Soy. I'm Michaela Jordan, here with Lauren Steinlogge, a farmer and conservation leader from Fayette County and recent recipient of the 2023 Aldo Leopold Conservation Award. Lauren, start by telling us about what this prestigious award is and what it means to you. The biggest part of the Leopold Award is uh, they emphasize the land ethic. It was officially announced uh, in August. Since then, it's just been a whirlwind of emotions stopping and think about what we've actually done to deserve the award and realizing the impact we've had over industry over the last several years. For me, it's just doing the right thing all along has been a good thing. You know, I owe a lot of what I've been able to do to my dad. You know, he's the one that instilled the thought into me. You know, we focus on doing the right thing on our farm. How can we make it better? The neat part is as we started surrounding ourselves with key people, it's just blossomed from there. You talked about the importance of water quality and working to improve the environment on your farm. What kind of conservation practices are you currently implementing or different strategies have you tried using? We started off with no-till. It was a struggle, I'll admit. It wasn't until we started, I think about 06 is when I started playing with the interseed cover crops and corn and stuff like that. By 2012, we kind of started figuring out we were doing the whole farm. We were heavy corn on corn. And then everybody's preaching to me about diversity, so it's like, how do we, as the livestock left our operation, how do we diversify in that? That's, we started growing soybeans in that. When you're in a strong corn environment, it's hard to pay the bills with just straight soybeans or stuff like that. That's eventually what led us into the relay cropping in that. The relay cropping is now where we plant a cereal crop in the fall, like most guys would plant cover crop, but we're actually planting it for the cash crop aspect of it. And then in the spring, we come in and we plant the soybean in between the twin rows of the cereal rye which gives us an opportunity to sneak down in between the soybeans and grab the cereal rye with the soybeans usually, you know, in that six inches to foot range and effectively double cropping in Northeast Iowa. Working on those relay cropping experiences with the Iowa Soybean Association and the Research Center for Farming Innovation, how have you seen that change your bottom line and your productivity? Iowa Soybean Association jumped on board, working with Postville RCD and that, and it was neat to see other people start seeing the value of what we've done, and then they start seeing the dollar figures and that that we were experiencing already. Then to really start tying in and backing it up with the actual field scale data, that's when I had my aha moment that, hey, we're onto something pretty cool. You know, how can we help push it? And one of the proudest moments I have is Ashley Henson showed up at our farm here a couple years ago and she started using some of the data on our farm that shows at a flood scale level that we could mitigate flooding and stuff like that. The city of Cedar Rapids, we could help their flood mitigation if everybody used our practices on a watershed scale. FEMA got involved at that point. They started talking 50% reduction in flooding. That's huge. You know, that's when we start realizing we can reach beyond the farm gate with our farming practices. I know you've also used some other different cropping practices, including alternative cropping systems to help improve your farm. What are some of those alternative crops that you've grown or different varieties that you've tried? We've done uh, wheat, rye, barley, oats with the soybeans but we need to expand beyond that. You know, we were, last year we did a camelina project where we tried doing camelina and soybeans. And then at the same time, we tried uh, rape, which would be the same as canola. Tried to implement that in. We did learn enough, you know, I did get some camelina in the combines. So I know the potential's there. The neat part is that's given us an option beyond cereal rye for diversity in our cropping system. There's countless conservation options, no matter what your farm looks like, from diversifying it using alternative cropping systems to doing trials with the Iowa Soybean Association. You can find what conservation practices are best for you. Thank you, Lauren, for meeting with us today, and congratulations on your prestigious award. Reporting for this edition of The State of Soy, I'm Michaela Jordan. Progress is a human invention. We look at our world and we imagine how to make it better. That's the power of human ingenuity. We can redefine what's possible. At Bear, we're shaping the future of agriculture. Like farms where all life grows together. It's not impossible, it's progress.